glad that's over, right? Here's to a new year. Cheers, guys. Welcome to 2021. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about a few things that I learned or that I experienced last year that I'm carrying over into this year. The first thing I want to talk about is being alone and how being able to be alone is actually such a beautiful gift. A lot of people really struggled with being alone this year with quarantine, being isolated, and with having to face that solitude. Being able to be alone is such an incredible gift. Um, I've always kind of been naturally an introvert, so for me, it's really easy to get too into being alone, which is something that happened a little bit during the course of 2020, especially when quarantine and lockdown was really bad. So that was kind of the second thing that I also experienced was, yeah, being able to be alone is fantastic. Being naturally comfortable with being in my own space by myself is fantastic. But also introverts really need community as well. If you're an introverted person, you probably experience that feeling of having to make yourself socialize and in 2020, you kind of couldn't make yourself socialize. But at the same time, I found that it was really important to keep some of those community things going in place just to keep my own mental and spiritual health where it needed to be. And for me, it used to be daily mass, a lot of stuff at the church. Obviously, daily mass stopped being a thing. And now that daily mass is resuming, I'm starting to look at going back, but it was a different world and a different time. I had a different pastor and I had a spiritual director. It was a whole other thing when I was doing that. And part of the reason that I was doing that actually leads into my next thing, my next sort of like observation from 2020. And that is that the sacraments can disappear like that immediately. And let me put this another way you have certain inalienable rights, God-given rights, in the United States our Constitution acknowledges them as such, but those rights can and will be violated. That is just something that we as Christians in the West, in our sort of privileged Christianity, and I, I hate that word, but when you compare us to people who are living under the threat of death for practicing the faith, yeah, our rights could totally be trampled on. And it's not even that bad. That's that's the crazy part. And, you know, people are kind of acting like it's the end of days, but um, we could have it so much worse. And we could totally be in a situation where the sacraments aren't available. In fact, the sacraments being unavailable to persecuted Christians throughout the world was part of the reason why I decided to start going to daily mass in the first place back at the end of 2019. And I guess in 2020 it sort of crystallized in this weird way where I had been going to daily mass every single day, seven days a week for several months at that point with this intention on my heart and I didn't know what was going to happen and I definitely couldn't have predicted that I myself would find myself in that situation and in that Eucharistic fast which is so difficult um, even though I wasn't taking it for granted and I was actively actively appreciating it um, actively appreciating it with the knowledge and the thought of those who can't do that. So yeah, um, if that didn't click in 2020, let it click right now. The sacraments can disappear at any time in a moment's notice. Your rights can be violated. They probably will continue to be violated. And this is something that we're just going to have to level with and that we're going to have to learn how to deal with as Christians in this part of the world where so far, for the most part, 
we really haven't had to and we've for the most part um, had our religious liberty so speaking of powers and principalities of darkness and all of that kind of stuff the next big lesson from 2020 the next big takeaway is it is not enough just to avoid the enemy you have to hit back that's a hard one for me i don't know if this is a hard one for you but it's one thing to avoid the enemy to avoid the near occasions of sin to change our life to kind of avoid sin and reroute ourselves in better directions but if you're in a fight with somebody and you just spend all your time blocking and you never actually go in for a punch and attack them, then you can't win that fight. And the same thing is true in the spiritual life. So if you're fighting with the enemy, then you're going to have to throw some punches. You can't just block and deflect and and dodge. You're going to have to throw some punches as well. You're going to... Uh, you're going to have to throw some punches as well. You're going to have to go on the offensive. And scripture says that he will flee when we do that. So don't be afraid to throw a few punches. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know where that was going. Just, you know, throw some punches. Okay. So speaking of the way the world is now, the next two things kind of go hand in hand in terms of it's probably a good idea to start doing these next two things. And the first one is it's probably a good idea to start familiarizing yourself with prepping, maybe to start doing a little bit of prepping yourself, maybe to start your stockpile a little bit. Um, if you don't know what prepping is, it's basically sort of the practice of uh, preparing for various disasters and eventualities like that. So obviously with lockdown and COVID and everything, we saw people hoarding like toilet paper and clearing the shelves at the store and all of that kind of stuff. So preppers are the type of people that would have already had most of that stuff stored away just in case like the apocalypse is coming. and. There's like different degrees of it, whether you have supplies for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a few years, there's different levels of it, but it's a good time to familiarize yourself with that. I think we've gotten a very mild taste of the kinds of things that we could possibly be looking at. So it's not a bad idea to stock up a little bit while everything is still on the shelves, just in case this isn't the last time that we're looking at a situation like this. And that's totally like a practical thing and not really a spiritual thing. But if your home is peaceful and especially ladies that are homemakers and stuff like that, if your home is peaceful and provisioned and you have the things you need in place in case of certain types of emergencies and you're not panicking going here and there, that's going to help you to cultivate an environment of a lot more peace and that's going to be so so helpful to you especially if everything is in chaos outside the walls so along the same lines it's probably a good idea also to familiarize yourself with the various prophecies and marian apparitions and other apparitions that are approved by the church and I emphasize approved by the church because when you start getting into stuff that is not approved by the church, you start getting into like a weird area, especially if you're talking about stuff that has been rejected by the church. That is especially stuff that um, you should stay away from. And I know that like we all have our feelings about the hierarchy and whether the deposit of faith is being protected or not and everything that's going on right now. And like that's a whole other video, honestly. But just with respect to the apparitions and the prophecies and visions and whatnot of various saints of our lady of our lord etc i would stick to the ones that have been approved by the church so our lady of fatima our lady of cabejo our lady of lords um our lady of aikido like just a few marian ones off the top of my head there are countless more 
Um, read the Diary of St. Faustina. She had visions and apparitions of um, Our Lady and Our Lord and wrote about them extensively. It's a good time to just familiarize yourself with the sort of extra scriptural uh, material that the church has to offer. Some of this stuff is starting to like seem like it's kind of coming true a little bit. So you might want to read up on it. Just, just a thought. The last thing I want to talk about is the thing that's probably been on my heart the most for the last several months and it's been part of the reason why I've been gone. It's okay to wrestle with God. So Jacob was regarded as the patriarch of the Israelites and he was given the name Israel, which means he who wrestles with God. And wrestling with God is different than rejecting God or um, God forbid cursing God or something like that. Wrestling with God, um, which is something that I've very much been doing over the last year, even when it came to this channel, this channel, which I've put up very few videos, very scattered. I know that because I was wrestling with this assignment that I've been given and wrestling with feelings of unworthiness and all kinds of other stuff that I won't get into specifically, but I had to get into it with the Lord and really sort it out. And sometimes you need to do that to get to where he's trying to get you. So it is okay to wrestle with the Lord if you are in that interaction trust him you'll get through it you'll make it through and you're going to get to where he's trying to get you so those are seven things i experienced observed or learned last year that i am bringing into this year let's pray for a better year let's pray for a renewal uh, in the church and a renewal of the faith let's Pray for our religious leaders and pray for each other. My brothers and sisters, I love you so much. Thanks for watching. Um, if you are not subscribed, make sure to hit the bell, um, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button. really helps me out. You know all the YouTube stuff. If you like spicy political memes, make sure you check out my Instagram. That's mostly what I'm doing over there. And I'll see you guys in the next one. God bless.